SpaceX Starship IFT-9 launch date and major upgrades. Let's get into them. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking space, SpaceX, Starlink, Linux, and a ton of tech. So today is going to be a SpaceX Starship day. Really excited about this. We've been waiting for IFT9 to launch. Well, it's coming and it's coming soon. I'm gonna give you the launch date before the end of this video. And I wanna go through some of the things that are going on with IFT9, because it's been a little bit since we watched IFT8 blow up. Before I get into the article, I wanna say that if you enjoy the video, even in the least, consider giving it a thumbs up. That'll be very, very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you. I appreciate that. Click this little notification button over here so I go live when a new video comes out. You will be notified of it immediately. And if you just want to give back to the channel, YouTube gave us a little thanks button down here. Thank you, YouTube. Click on that thanks button. You can give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. And and if you want more SpaceX Starlink content, I've put together over 480 videos just for you. 480 videos. I'll put a link over here to a playlist. Click on that when you're done watching this video. Not now. When you're done watching this video. And once again, you'll find a lot of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy. And of course, the why behind all of it. Not just the how, but the why. So anyways, let's get right into this article and I'll give you my commentary. And then finally, I want to hear from you down below in the comment area. This channel is about us, the community, not some talking head here. Down below in the comment area, I want to know what you think about IFT9. What do you think about all of this stuff? Anyways, starts out by saying Starship IFT9, SpaceX's next leap towards reusability. SpaceX is preparing for its ninth integrated flight test, or IFT-9, of the Starship launch system, targeting May 21st, 2025. If you're just here for the date, there you go. May 21st is the date. And this is according to Maritime and a lot of things that are all pointing to that date, May 21st. So be here. Hang out with me. This mission will feature Ship 35 atop Booster 14, both incorporating significant upgrades aimed at addressing issues from previous flights and advancing the vehicle's capabilities. Reflecting on IFT-8, progress amidst challenges. IFT-8 concluded with mixed results. Kind of mixed. Boom. While the upper stage, Ship 34, suffered a failure due to premature shutdown of four out of the six vacuum Raptor engines, leading to a loss of control and eventual breakup over the Caribbean. In a significant milestone, this flight marked the third time a booster was caught midair by the launch tower's Mechazilla arms at Starbase, Texas, reinforcing SpaceX's progress towards full booster reusability. IFT-9 Implementing Lessons Learned Building on the insight from IFT-8, SpaceX has implemented several key modifications in the up-and-coming IFT-9 mission. These enhancements are designed to improve performance, increase reliability, and move closer to the goal of full reusability for the launch system. Objectives of IFT-9 Advancing Starship's Capabilities the primary goals of IFT-9 include validating the performance of the redesigned heat shield, assessing the effectiveness of the repositioned forward flaps, and testing the reliability of the upgraded Raptor engines under flight conditions. Additionally, the mission aims to demonstrate the viability of larger propellant tanks in support of extended flight durations. Success in these areas is crucial for SpaceX's long-term vision of enabling interplanetary travel and establishing a sustainable human presence on Mars. Looking ahead, the future of Starship. 
with the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, granting approval for up to 25 Starship launches per year from Boca Chica's facility, SpaceX is poised to accelerate its testing and development schedule. The outcomes of IFT-9 will inform subsequent iteration and bring the company closer to achieving its ambitious goals. As the aerospace community watches closely, the forthcoming launch represents not just a test of hardware, but a testament to the iterative process driving innovation in exploration. Absolutely the case. So this is really big. For me, I am just, I am stoked. I am so excited to be able to see IFT-9 launch. And this time, I want to see not just Super Heavy get caught with the Mechazilla arms, the chopsticks, right, on the ground, but I also want to see SpaceX Starship go around the planet and possibly even, they didn't talk about in this article, but possibly even deploy some of the version three SpaceX Starlink satellites, the duds, the demos, let's call them. So this would be really, really great. Once again, they didn't talk about that in this article, but it is very, very important for us that use SpaceX Starlink on a daily basis. As we see more and more version three satellites on orbit, we're going to see speeds increase and latency decrease and the availability increase also. So we're not gonna have any lines, there's not gonna be any weights and there's not going to be any upcharge for areas that are congested. $100, $250, we're not going to see that anymore. So this is really, really exciting. Now, I listed some of the changes that have been made. The upgrades from the IFT-8 to the IFT-9 are actually block one to block two, let's call it. And some of these changes are big. Number one, there's going to be three different heat shielding tiles on there. You're going to have the standard tiles that are on all of them, but you're also going to get these improved attachment tiles so that they don't fall off during the massive, massive shaking and vibration that happens during launch. Also, they're going to be including actively cooled tiles. This is awesome to me, because if you don't know what an actively cooled tile is, just think about this. If you have ever built a PC and you have your CPU here and you put on top of the CPU this copper plate and on the top of the copper plate you have a fan or possibly even better, some type of water cooling that flows through that copper plate, well that is actively cooling. If you just simply have the, your CPU and then a attached plate that has fins, let's say gills on it, that is passively cooling. All right. It is dissipating the heat from the CPU. The same thing holds true here. The standard tiles are cooled passively, meaning those ceramics heat up and then the heat dissipates over time. An actively cooled tile means that underneath it, there's going to be some type of active cooling. Now, what are they going to use for that? How are they going to do it? I don't know. I haven't read anything on it, but if it's anything like the heat sink on, let's say a CPU, that means that you're going to have the ceramic tile here and then underneath it you're going to have some type of cooling liquid that goes through it or below it that will cool it down so once again actively cooled that is awesome i want to see how that works because that could be something really big because the propellant on the ship is sub-zero anyways so if you can get that propellant to go through a certain area well, that can cool that heat shielding a lot, a lot. You can't spring a leak because that'd be a problem, but we'll see what they do with that because that could be something amazing. Maybe they put a piece of metal, right? Like we do with the CPU, maybe that copper, but instead of copper, maybe stainless steel in between the ceramic and then underneath that stainless steel is where you'll have that active cooling or where that cooling goes through or goes through some type of piping or something. This way, if one of those tiles pops off, the heat isn't going to directly hit the tubing and melt it. It will hit that stainless steel first. So it would be a two, four if they do that. So we'll see what ends up happening. Also, they're repositioning those flaps from block one to block two. The flaps are tucked in. They're no longer at that 180 degrees. They're sitting at about 120, 130 degrees. So they're tucked in about 40 degrees and they're made smaller. That is a big deal. That is a big deal because we saw those flaps slowly melting off. The exterior skin started melting through. 
due, due to the plasma, just a ton of heat. And that won't happen as much, I think, if these are pulled in. That 40 degrees will make a big difference. Also, they have these larger propellant tanks. So the tank, instead of being able to hold like 1,200 metric tons of propellant, it can hold 1,500 tons. So 300 tons more propellant on the new tanks. So that is about a 25% increase in propellant. That is going to be a big deal when they're trying to go further with the ship, especially when we're going to go to Mars and whatnot. So last but not least is the Raptor engines. What I'm understanding is they're gonna be using the Raptor 3s. Now they had the Raptor 1, the Raptor 2, and the Raptor 3. They are different. Number one, the Raptor 3, the new one, just simply does just a greater amount of thrust and it's just simply lightweight. It is lighter weight. So if we look at a comparison, the original Raptor 1s were putting out approximately 185 tons of thrust. Then with the Raptor 2, they hit up to about 230 tons, and now the Raptor 3 is at 280 tons of thrust per Raptor engine. That is a lot. And the weight is massive also. A let's say reduction in weight. So Raptor 1 was coming in at about 2,000 kilograms, 2,000. Then it went down to approximately 1,600, 1,630 with the Raptor 2. Now they're down to 1,525, another 100 kilograms less. Why is that the case? Well, if you look at the difference between the Raptor 1, Raptor 2, and Raptor 3, it is a mass difference. You come with something that looks kind of like spaghetti with a ton of crap all over the place to something that's just sleek and streamlined, something that you would see on a spaceship. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you got something out of this video and I am really excited for this IFT-9. I hope you are too. Please join me once again, May 21st. I will be here and I hope you are too. So if you enjoyed the content, throw it a thumbs up, like I said before, and don't forget to head over to my website, jchristina.com. Once again, jchristina.com. Check out my merch, my shirts, my tees, my books, all the rest of my stuff over there. Check it out. If there's something there you like, please pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and hopefully we see you for IFT9. Take care, guys. Love you.